The National Training Agency, or NTA, has become a beacon of opportunity and excellence, forging a path towards a highly skilled and competitive Bahamian workforce. Established in 2013, the agency has emerged at the forefront of competency-based training in the country. As the National Training Agency celebrates its 10th anniversary, we take a closer look at its impressive achievements and hear from some of the key individuals and stakeholders who have played pivotal roles within the organization. With a background as an experienced human resource specialist, Agatha Marcel has been instrumental in the success of the National Training Agency since its inception as its architect and builder. Her leadership and expertise have played a crucial role in steering the agency towards fulfilling its mandate. The idea to create the agency uh, came from the fact that we here in the Bahamas really needed to do something about what was being considered by a number of the international organizations as low productivity in the Bahamas. So based on the fact that there was already a CARICOM initiative existing for all the CARICOM countries to establish national training agencies, uh, it became a natural takeoff from that. And um, it began in earnest in 2006 under the Christie administration when we uh, began to put it all together. I was supposed to begin to set it up in 2007. Administration changed and the um, new administration's policy did not include uh, setting up a national training agency. So I had been given a contract uh, by the Christie administration to do it, but that never came to fruition. So the blueprint, the, all the ideas were uh, cemented during that time between 2007 and actually 2012, while I was away from the politics because I gave up the politics to do the agency. That was when, with God's help, I came up with the blueprint for the agency. So everything was in place. And when the administration changed again in 2012, uh, they invited me to come and set it up. And so I had everything done, including the draft of the legislation. I put all that together in the years when I was in exile. Ms. Marcel credits former Prime Minister Perry Christie with playing a pivotal role in bringing the NTA to fruition. I wasn't very happy in the parliament as a parliamentarian because I felt, I know this is what I'm supposed to do. And so it was he that made it possible and he says, okay, but if you set up the agency, you can't be a member of parliament. So I chose, so I said, okay, I don't wanna be a member of parliament. I would rather do this. And he was behind it 100%. They never bothered me. They left me alone to do it. And I did it, I set it up with five clerical, administrative kind of people. The whole thing. Among the numerous individuals who have benefited from the National Training Agency, Ms. Marcel highlights two individuals that particularly stand out. And they're my favorite. They did butler, butler service. They were amazing young men. Wendell in particular did his intern at the one and only Ocean Club before it was um, rebranded, and they kept Wendell on. And the, the commendations that he got from his guests were amazing. And he just, he moved from there and he kept climbing, 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 and he's still climbing. The National Dreaming Agency 
In all honesty, before I found out about the National Training Agency, I worked at Luciano's of Chicago as a steward. Every day, I went inside there on time with my putty and in my back pocket, prepared to face about 50 pots half my size. And while I used to clean those pots, I would observe the waiters and the bus boys, and they all looked so happy. They would intentionally come in the back in the kitchen where I was stated, stationed and actually count their tips. And it made me extremely interested. At the time, I had recently graduated high school. My parents sacrificed to put me through private school. However, they did not have any funds to further any type of education for me. I was very willing, but still, I was lost in terms of what was my next step. So I watched the news, looked in the newspapers, and just continued to search for some type of opportunity where I could better myself as an individual. And that's why I found out about the National Training Agency. I couldn't believe it in all honesty. What they were offering, and also for free, and for young individuals, it was like a blessing. So I signed up immediately and I got enrolled. And from there, in all honesty, God has just guided my path forward. The National Training Agency, it gave me a chance. A chance that wasn't out there for other individuals like myself. And I took that chance and I made the best out of it. From doing that, and applying all the different things that I've learned from the workforce prep, one, and two, butler service, I made it my lifestyle. So everywhere I go, or everywhere I went, I walk different, I speak different, I address others different. And from doing that, individuals are able to recognize this, this young man is well-trained and he's different from the others. The National Training Agency is a blessing. Many don't understand, or many haven't really took time to look into it, to see what the possibilities you can gain from it. But what I know for a fact, speaking on my own life, if it wasn't for the National Training Agency, I would not have been able to accomplish the many things I've accomplished at this point in time in my life. Robinson's business partner, Wendell Curtis, a fellow graduate of the National Training Agency, shares his journey of discovering the NTA and how its benefits have significantly enhanced his career progression. So I've learned about the National Training Agency in 2015 after my business partner, Alvin Robinson, he would have went through the, the program and I saw how powerful and transformative it was for him. So, I mean, he had a challenge for me to take it on and to try and come to the program and finish off like himself as the top recipient or the star recipient, which I was able to come into the industry, give it a chance, and I was able to accomplish this. Um, since then, I had a shower blessings and opportunities that just came with going through the program, and I, I think it was a great move and step forward inside my career building. The number one thing that I learned from the National Training Agency and that continues to stick with me is that you can never stop learning, you can never stop growing. Even though I accomplished so much within this time frame, I believe that there's so much more that I could obtain and so much more that I could achieve. And I, it just excites me and it gets me motivated to continue on trying to because just knowing that hey, if you were able to do this within eight years, imagine what the next 10 years has to offer. And once you realize that no matter how old you get, no matter what you learn, what you accomplish, you can never stop learning, you can never stop achieving. I tell you that that's one thing you should go through the National Training Agency at least to even obtain for yourself. Mm -hmm. The National Training Agency presently provides competency-based training in various locations, including 
New Providence, Exumo, Eleuthero, Cat Island, and Grand Bahama. Through the NTA, Bahamians now have the opportunity to enroll in two prestigious levels of leadership management training offered by the Institute of Leadership and Management and City and Gills. City and Gills has been in existence for the past 140 years. Um, they are an awarding body and um, they serve as the global leader for technical and leadership and management skills development. What the NTA is now doing is helping um, City and Gills with that objective that they have to, to shape the future of skills needs throughout the region and not only here but globally. And another thing that they are doing too is they are able to, the Bahamas NTA is um, working along with City and Gills to transform the lives of persons, helping them to build businesses and economies and they are tapping into it in the, the candidates' individual potentials to be able to, you know, first get a job, um, progress into the higher level, and perhaps someday um, be marketable in the global market. The National Training Agency was created under the auspices of the Ministry of Labor and National Insurance and was officially launched on July 15, 2013. One of the greatest advocates of the National Training Agency has been former Labor and National Insurance Minister D. Shane Gibson, whose unwavering support and commitment to the sustainable growth and development of the agency has played a significant role in its growth and success. Well, first of all, um, I'm from a trade union background, and so I always appreciated the fact that um, workers of the country needed to be properly trained um, in order to take advantage of all the, of the opportunities that will become available in the Bahamas. And I had a conversation with the um, then Prime Minister, that was, this was prior to the 2007 elections, where uh, Bahama was coming on stream. We had a lot of major developments going on. Um, foreign direct investment was at its peak. And we didn't want Bahamians missing out on these opportunities. And so um, when we looked around, we thought it was, it was, impo it was important to see how we could equip Bahamians to take advantage of all these opportunities. And so he came up with the idea of us establishing a national training agency. This was prior to the 2007 elections. Uh, at the time, we um, uh, appointed Agana Marcel, was then the parliamentary secretary in my ministry, Ministry of um, Labor and uh, Immigration. And we appointed as the person to spearhead the national training agency. Unfortunately, the government changed in 2007. And even though she had a letter of appointment ready, the incoming government just scrapped the entire idea because they didn't see the wisdom in it. And then after the, we won again in 2012, um, we um, then um, looked at how we could get this thing started again because it was very important to us to, uh, to equip Bahamians. And um, we reached out to Agatha, Agatha Marcel, who was more than um, um, willing and accepted the um, responsibility of then helping us to establish a national training agency. And uh, now the rest is history. I can tell you, um, from this started, it, you know, it, it, it sort of gives you good gratification when you walk in an establishment and people walk up to you and say, Mr. Gibson, you don't know why I am. I say, no, I say I'm a graduate of the national training agency. You know, and then when I was there to hear employers talk about how competent these individuals was, then you, you knew right away that your work wasn't in vain. So the National Training Agency itself is, is, is this proof. And listen here, man, if we are able to train these persons who are not academically inclined, but who can function, once you give them the basic skills to function in the job, you know, then the Bahamas will be a better place. Because when you look at them interacting with Bahamians, with tourists, I mean, we are in the hospitality industry. That's our biggest industry. And unless we're able to train people properly, then we could just kill our industry overnight. Cultural enthusiast and educator Arlene Nash Ferguson shares how she became involved with the agency. I became involved in the National Training Agency because I accepted their invitation some years ago to be a lecturer there. The Agatha Marcel and I go way back from the government high school to McMaster University. And so when I got the request, there was no question that I would accept. I could not tell her no. 
My experience with the NTA has been a phenomenal one. I did not know quite what to expect when I accepted the invitation, but I was in for a very pleasant surprise. First of all, Mrs. Marcel provides a very dynamic and opening, for want of a better word, of a, an environment is created where the staff, first of all, is very excited and it seems to me glad to be there. And so that radiates. The most important thing about the staff for me what I feel is their genuine interest in and determination to ensure that the young people who come through those doors succeed. And so there is an energy there that I was honored to tap into. And I really enjoy every minute, not only the staff, but you have young people coming through and I always tell any young person who will listen, never miss an opportunity to learn. And so I acknowledge is power. And so I always start off by congratulating them for being there because there are so many other things they can be doing and places that they can be. As the first chairperson of the National Training Agency, Elizabeth Keiju recounts her role in the establishment of the agency. I was appointed as the chairman of the board of directors of the National Training Agency by the Honorable D. Shane Gibson, who was the Minister of the Public Service, and at that time I was the permanent secretary. For a new entity, and again, not only the entity was new, but many of the board of directors were new to this procedure, but um, basically, we looked at what other boards did, so we, what was done previously, especially you know, in the government, there are many boards and there were many boards of directors. So we um, looked at how they were formulated. So we did our research. And of course, we knew what the purpose of the National Training Agency was. And so we followed that procedure, looking at what was and what we wanted it to be and what it should be and then that's how we developed the policy. Of course, every, we voted on most things, you know, so if there were X number, say there were nine persons, we must have a majority of persons voting for it in order for that to pass. So everything was by consensus. The National Training Agency collaborates with approved training providers to offer a wide range of courses and programs. Employers play a crucial role in the NTA's training programs providing internship opportunities and employment prospects for graduates. The National Training Agency collaborates closely with the Ministry of Labor to align training programs with labor market needs. Well, the NTA, first of all, was established by an Act of Parliament in 2013, and it was established to ensure that competency, employability, ensure that persons get the requisite skills training that they need for on the job. But more importantly, um, they are a certified entity. We have what is called an, a National Apprenticeship Bill, or an Act rather, and it has been around from time immemorial. And we are in the process of introducing a new Apprenticeship Bill into Parliament. But we formed a committee, but what the Prime Minister saw and, and wanted is that he saw that there was a number of programs in the private sector um, in the public sector, there are a number of apprenticeship programs, job skills, training programs, and they are all more or less anecdotal, or they're all disjointed. And so what is needed in the country is a national apprenticeship program. And obviously, the National Training Agency has the leading role to play in something like that, where we're able to bring all of these programs together. So for instance, you have a number of the accounting firms, you have a, a number of the uh, persons involved in dentistry, and you have a number of persons who are involved in the financial sector and all of these health industries, etc., who have uh, an apprenticeship program within their employ employment. But the problem is that a lot of behemoths are unaware that they actually exist. 
and so particularly in the public schools and so we need to ensure that when we introduce an apprenticeship program the national training agency is able to combine the soft skills training on the job training and then it ties right into the apprenticeship program or where they actually are paid while they get on the job training and so it's very critical the role that the NT is going to play is very critical not only in terms of amalgamating all of these programs but ensuring that there is continuity on the, of the programs. The National Training Agency's audio and visual media manager who has been with the agency since its inception recalls how his journey began. Believe it or not this journey started a little over 10 years ago. I can't believe that I'm still here. Um, I could always remember when I walked into the old post office building there on East Street where I went for my first interview with Ms. Marcel at the time. And I had no idea that I was actually going to get hired, let alone be here 10 years later. And that's how my journey really began. Um, I had one interview and I guess I connected with her and today I'm still here. There have been like so many memorable experiences. I can remember the day when we moved here to this building from the Hilton because we were first on the third floor of the Hilton and then we moved here and we opened this building here on Gladstone Road and Munnings Drive. So that was a day that I could definitely remember. And just seeing the agency grow by leaps and bounds, opening our office in Grand Bahama, opening our office in Exuma, opening the Institute of Leadership and Management Center. These were all things that I was actually present for and had to work to make sure that it became a success. So it definitely was a journey. So there were so many mem memorable moments, but those were definitely ones that stand out. The National Training Agency looks to the future with a focus on continuous growth and development with an exciting vision for the Bahamian workforce. 10 years from now, I want to see the NTA better. What I don't want to see is people turning it into a school. It is not a school. It is a coordinating body that puts together all the pieces of training the way we do it. There's a tendency when people can't connect with actually developing people and wanting to get the best out of them and see the best, they think the answer is oh, send them to a class. So I want to see the NTA grow in the direction that it was meant to grow. One needs only to follow the legislation. So from here, the next thing we begin to do is develop those uh, national vocational qualifications that I, I told you about. The way that is done, we take, or it ought to be done, we take the two pieces of the program, the soft skills that we do, add that to the practical skills. And now we have a qualification. That national qualification can then be transferred or conformed into an international qualification. The National Training Agency has transformed countless lives and has contributed to the development of a highly skilled and competitive workforce in the Bahamas. Through collaboration, innovation, and a commitment to excellence, the National Training Agency continues to shape the future of training and job placement in the country.